content. The Real Estate Show on CJAD 800. Your real estate and mortgaging questions answered with Chantal Desjardins and Terry Kalakos. And a good Sunday afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the Real, Est real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, Chartered Mortgage Broker and President of Northeast Mortgages. Uh, unfortunately, Chantal couldn't be with us today. She's actually uh, in Munich uh, in uh, Disney World over there, which uh, I find kind of uh, entertaining. Uh, in studio with me, uh, I have Eleni Akrivos. Uh, she's Chartered Real Estate Broker and President at Northeast Realties. And today we're going to be talking about the current real estate and mortgage market. What's up, Eleni? How's it going, Terry? Excellent. I can't complain. I'm stressed. As you know, I always break stuff. Yeah, so you'll Chantal, be fine. Chantal usually keeps me at bay and she makes sure that I don't break too many things. But uh, uh, there's a lot of buttons in front of me and mm. uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We're all here. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's it's actually it's it's going to be an interesting show today because with rates going up, condos being built and home prices still on the rise in many neighborhoods today, we are going to actually be looking at exactly what's going on and how to handle today's market and how to prepare for the future. So it's going to be uh, interesting. Yeah. I know you have a lot to say about this. Um, on the real estate, uh, real estate side, there's a lot going on, just like on your side, on the mortgage side. So yeah. I think uh, it'll be interesting for people to tune in and see what's, like you said, what's happening now. And maybe we'll make some predictions for 2019. Ooh, I like it. Did you get your crystal ball out? I did. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Uh, so don't forget, you can always join the conversation by calling in with your questions at 514-790-0800 or texting in your questions at 514-800. Uh, you can also watch us on the watch us and comment on Facebook Live at uh, facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages. Um, the shows that we do are always uh, recorded. They're broadcasting on Facebook Live. They're on our Instagram. They're on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, by all means, please do. It's newsonthego.ca. Uh, oh, sorry, dot ca. And um, you'll be uh, informed of... Um, any upcoming shows we have and all that uh, kind of good stuff. So uh, before we kind of kick off the show, I know what's kind of been on everyone's mind. Uh, my phone has been ringing off the hook this week, and it has to do with the overnight rate going up yet again. So the Bank of Canada met this week. They raised the overnight rate by uh, 0.25, bringing it up to 1.75. Um, that was uh, the big news of the week, plus uh, the Montreal Gazette, um, let out an article this week. I know I had a bunch of interviews uh, that I had to do this week about uh, the growing demand in China for Montreal properties. So oh, I know yeah. you want to speak about that a little bit. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I looked at some stats and uh, Montreal real estate sales hit nine year high for the month of September this year. Yeah, we're breaking records. It's Absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It, it means amazing. different things for different people, which of we're going to look into. But yeah, we're hitting records. Yeah, record sales. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's uh, it's it's crazy because we look at the new mortgage stress test that kind of came out, and it had a huge impact on the market. And there's a lot of people that right now are actually they're not qualifying for mortgages, unfortunately. And you know, just this week I had this, uh, you know, mom with a young child she makes about forty five thousand dollars a year and she wants to buy a property two hundred thousand it's not mm. anything crazy but she does have a car payment and you know unfortunately when people go and they apply for cars you know the people that you know yeah. get the do the loans for the cars and stuff like that they're not going to really get into too much of your finances they're just going to give you the financing unfortunately the ramifications of actually having a car loan in combination with the stress test plus an income of 45,000 becomes very difficult for people to actually qualify, especially yeah. single mothers, single fathers. Um, but even though we end up having stuff like that happening, yeah. the market is still very strong and there's a lot of buyers and there's a lot of activity happening, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is a it is it is really weird uh, that market because I have seen you guys on the mortgage side, uh, you know, have more difficulty qualifying people, more couples that were supposed to buy uh, because of the stress test and the new rules, like you said, you know, they haven't been able to buy. Yeah. So how come the market is so hot and how come, you know, everybody's saying we're in a seller's market and does that mean you can sell your house at whatever price? Like what's happening, right? 
you know, if you if you look at um, some shows that we did months back, and when these stress tes uh, stress tests actually started to come out, one of the things that I said was, the new stress test is going to stop people from upgrading their homes, right? So yeah. you have people that are living in that four hundred, four hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, yeah. and you know their thought process was, well, you know what, I'm going to sell this house and I'm going to go off and I'm going to buy another house at 500 or 600,000. Yeah. And unfortunately with the new stress tests, what's basically happened is these people do not qualify for the $500,000 house anymore because obviously they have a car and maybe sometimes two cars on payments and they have credit card debt and they have this and they have that. And when you put all of that together, they are not able to go into anything else. So they cannot upgrade. So because they can't upgrade, they're staying put. They're not selling that house. Yeah. Because they're not selling that house, now all of a sudden, you end up in a situation where there's this vacuum, right? There's there's a need for houses. There's a need for these people to be selling. They're not able to sell. Yeah. And because they're not able to sell, now all of a sudden, the people in the house range that was, let's say, 350 they can sell their house and they could go into the fours, but now they're going to ask for a higher price. Yeah. Right. So which ends up making it into a seller's market. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the way that I see it on my side. Yeah. Maybe it's different, you know, the way that well, you're seeing. No, we did. You, you did a show. I did a show about it as well. Yeah. And now it's just now it's just blown up to the point where uh, I, th I think there's a little bit of misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. I think I think we need to really get into, you know, on the mortgage side what's actually happening on, on the real estate side as well, because what's happening, what, what you're explaining is that uh, it's creating an inventory um you know a depletion mm -hmm. so right now for example it's 16 percent less homes are on the market in general in the province of quebec that's wow. a lot yeah 16 percent less absolutely but when you look at uh, specific markets and specific types of properties um it it, it, it changes so for example west island mm -hmm. has uh, actually the sorry the island of montreal all is 19 percent less listings that's even more than the province of quebec yeah. 19 percent wow. so that's driving the prices up Okay, and that's driving the uh, the sales up. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't mean, like you said, on the mortgage side, that everybody can afford to buy, right? So right. you're seeing people, I'm, I'm sure, in your office that were qualified before the stress test for a certain amount, right? Let's yes, say 450. And I remember yep. You, yep. you you spoke to the brokers and, and you, you were explaining it, how yep. people were approved for 450. And then now all of a sudden, they can only buy for, I don't know, 370. For that's, example, right. Right? that's right. Yeah. So what are you buying for 370 in the West Island? Not much, exactly. right? Yeah. So those people are out of the market. Um, but what we're seeing is, and we're going to get into it, is the condo market is really driving up the sales. So sales are up, like you said, record high, 9%. Okay, so 9% increase in sales. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that single homes are up 9%? No. 9% is just like, it's an average of sales, just number of sales are up. Okay. Yes. But we have to get into, our, is it plexes? Is it single homes? Is it condos? Yes, it's condos. Condos yeah. are up by 13%. And that's going to be an interesting part of the conversation because um, I've recently had conversations with people without going into any kind of specifics about the actual condo projects that are going up in Montreal. We may we may drop some names. Maybe we'll drop yeah. some names. We'll see after <laughs> yeah. the uh, 115 traffic break. Yeah. Um, but um, there's, there's some scary stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard some stuff that I'm not liking. Um, yeah. I think that um, Montreal, there there needs to be a change that needs to come in. And anyways, we'll we'll talk about it uh, a little bit later. Um, so yep. I I think did I cut you off? Oh, you're okay. No, no, no. You, we're you, talking okay. about yeah. We're saying that <laughs> okay. basically sales are up, and condos is one of the reasons that that, that yeah, the sales exactly. are up. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the stats in terms of the other types of properties and areas. Yeah. And interesting, I was looking at an article where certain areas in montreal condos are going up higher than houses okay so yeah. uh we'll be back after uh, the traffic break so and now uh, we're off to the cjd 800 traffic center with kira yeager if you are coming down from the Laurentians right now, there's some delays. So I am seeing patches of volume through um, Prévost and also through Mirabelle and Blainville. And also noticing uh, the Metropolitan West. Are we live? We're live. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Are we live? Okay. So what do you guys think? I'd like some feedback. We're Was shaking. That okay? We're happening. Was that okay? Because if, you know, I want to know, like, 
we're shaking and we're happening. We're shaking and we're happening. Terry's yeah. asking me questions. I'm like a freaking. We're freakin discussing. You're going to. Well, you're not used to. You're not used to hosting. That's why. Yeah. Terry, host with the most. You just keep that in your. Terry, the host with the with most. The most. <laughs> we have actually Dean here, which yeah. is Eleni's uh, son. I was about to say Eleni's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, what do you think? Great show. Yeah. All right. He's very enthusiastic. Dean, the team. Uh, <laughs> Terry, the host with the most. Um, yeah. Send us your question. Send you us your question. Yeah. You won't be able to find anything that rhymes with my name. <clears throat> yeah, I'm yeah. still working on Eleni, the Lenny. Remember when we... <laughs> if you guys have some suggestions about uh, what we can nickname Eleni, you know. Terry, the host with the most. No. Dean, the team. <laughs> Eleni, the... Helen, the... I don't know. I was going to say something. Yeah, it just sounded yeah. like uh, it was going to go bad. I, you know what happens? Marav looks at me and I get the, uh-uh, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Lenny, maybe you just want to go into number one a little bit more in detail. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to talk about a little bit about the stats? All the, the all the stuff that we have to talk about in number one. But the, definitely we saw a, a change from the stress test. Oh my god. Can I just say I'm only seeing certain type of buyers buy? I mean, okay, so I have a question coming in. There's a text, so okay. we'll get to the text. Sure. And then... Uh, and if you could just watch the phone, if you see it flashing, oh. just signal me and I'll stand up and tell him. Okay, just yeah. signal me, go like this, and I'll signal him. Yeah. Oh, you see, it flashes if you have a call coming in? Okay. Yeah. But because he knows. Oh. Well, he doesn't always watch it. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, condos, blah, 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 blah. I, I think also we're targeting, people are targeting too much one culture. It's not just foreigners from one specific Well, I read the country. CMHC report, and it says that Foreign investment is made up of Chinese, French from France, and the U.S. And it's all in about the same, again, they have a definition for foreign investment. People who are here less than a year. That is a foreign investor. All of the other Asian buyers we're, we're seeing, they're considered immigrants. They're staying here. Mm. So the 40%, the article about 40%. <coughs> She's like going like this. I'm like, am, am I on? Where am I on? <laughs> She's like, you're on. <laughs> I mean, the article in the Gazette, talk, it, it talked about 40%, but that's immigrants, because it coincides, if you read the CMHC report, it says there's up to 40% of immigrant buyers, West Mount, West Island, mm. TMR. I think you need to mention that at some point. Yeah. So it's not, and the perception that foreign buyers are buying, people feel like that's driving the price up. Is it what's driving the price up? Or is it just... Uh, well, if they could afford it, and nobody else can qualify for the mortgages, then yes. Is it because they're because of the demand? Where's the demand coming from? Kalakos, live online and on CJAD 800. I'm loving the uh, romantic music. I think we need to like switch it up to some ACDC or something. All right, do it. Maybe Put we'll in get, your request. Maybe we'll get David Simon to drop us some ACDC after. Okay, Perfect. we got it. We got a, <laughs> a head nod. Um, so before the break, we were kind of talking and during the break on Facebook Live, we were kind of discussing about foreign investors. You want to you want to kind of elaborate on what we were? Uh... Sure. Well, I mean, the only thing I want to just touch on quickly before we talk about foreign investors yeah. and we define what foreign investors are, because I'm not going to just open that can of worms without defining it. Sure. Okay? Uh, quickly, I said before the break that the sales of condos went up 13%. Okay. Right. Um, just to put that into perspective. Okay. Uh, sales of single homes went up 1%. Right. Do, do you see the difference? Yes. Sales of plexes went up about three to 5%. Okay. Huge difference here. Okay. So when we're talking about prices going up, low inventory we're talking about supply and demand right so there is definitely a higher demand for the condo the, the condominium type property well if, obviously because i mean if someone is not able to go and afford a yeah. 300 400 thousand dollar home yes. they're obviously going to end up switching over to the condo market so that's one you know? of the reasons exactly that's one of the reasons i'm reading about and, I, and I'm, I'm you're probably seeing it right yeah. on the actual qualification side that oh Absolutely. i can't afford a single home i'm gonna go get a condo yeah 
So that's one of the reasons I think the demand is higher. The other, which we're going to get into uh, with the article in, in the Gazette, is that there is a higher demand from, again, I'm going to I'm going to put it in quotations, what what we're calling, you know, foreign investors and immigration. There's mm -hmm. a, there's a there's a lot of immigration happening in Quebec. Um, so there is a demand f from those populations for condos. So that's yeah. why we're seeing 13 percent sales up in condos, whereas single homes, uh, single homes and plexes are not as high. Right. I, I think that there's also a, we have a, a bunch of texts that are coming in. Oh, so good. I'm going to just get to them. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of xenophobia that's that's happening. Uh, you know, we've seen it in different markets. Uh, you know, people have been talking about the Chinese and, you know, people from the Middle East kind of coming in and, mm -hmm. and buying out properties. And we'll get into it anyways yep. a little bit later. But uh, we got a couple of texts that came in. Uh, first one. Uh, Hi, Terry. I like your show. I listen every Sunday on CJD 800 AM. Thank you. That's uh, from Chris in Riviere de Prairies. Thank you, Chris, for listening. I appreciate that. And uh, we have another uh, text here. Uh, hi, uh, can you give us your opinion on when the best time to put our home uh, in Beaconsfield up for sale? We have a ranch style with four bedrooms. Thanks, Kathleen. That's an excellent question. Yeah. And that's something that we're, we're also seeing a lot. Uh, you mentioned before people that want to move up uh, to a bigger property and then they can't afford it, so they're staying in their property. Sure. It's creating a lower inventory. Um, a lot of people I'm meeting now, they want to wait until the spring to put up their, their, their the home for sale um, because they f they feel it's a seller's market. They mm -hmm. feel like I'm going to put it up and it's just going to sell. And that's not the truth. It's a seller's market only because you have a lower inventory and you have a higher number of buyers yes. typically. Okay. So four bedroom home in Beaconsfield, it is in demand, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's typically going to sell well if it's priced properly. I would put it on the market before because you have to give yourself the time right now you mentioned it before there's a lot of active buyers and yes. right now it's the serious buyers yeah. that are out there there's less of them but they're out there um, in the spring typically you will have a little bit more buyers but you're also going to have more properties on the market mm -hmm. right competition you think you get a lot of looky loos also in uh you in do. the spring R yeah. uh, in the spring you just get people coming out because it's nice sure. the weather's yeah. nice so you just have a lot of like neighbors and free people. coffee yeah come for the donuts <laughs> you know but right now you have a lot of people just like they're like i don't care if it's cold and if it's raining i'm gonna buy a house so yeah. you have the serious buyers right so i mean if she you know if uh the, the textures wants more info i mean they can always call the office uh, yeah absolutely you know, make an appointment with us and look more into detail in their property but um right now i'm suggesting to people to list before also the interest rates again that's your crystal ball i yeah. don't know what's going to happen with the interest rates right they just went up like mm -hmm. you said are they going to go up again and on december 5th i think there's another announcement uh yeah coming yeah, so that yeah. you'll give us your crystal ball yeah because yeah. i is that going to affect you know do, do we want do you want to get the buyers as a seller do you want to get the buyers qualified now getting in and buying your house sure or do you want to wait after will there be less qualified buyers right? i i think kathleen should give us a call at the office and uh, we'll definitely <laughs> take care of her so uh, our number at the office is uh, 514-680-4674 uh, we have another text that uh, just came in. Uh, friends looking at a house in LaSalle being put under pressure to put in an offer within 24 hours, <laughs> telling me that this is the way the market is now uh, on the island of Montreal, a seller's market. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, man. You want to elaborate? Come on. It's a seller's market, guys. Yeah, it really <laughs> so, is. Again, seller's market, let me define. Does it mean you can put up your house and ask whatever you want? No. Okay, because the bank is going to come in, right, Terry? They're going to want to get mortgage. Well, that's mortgage. the thing. There's a lot of times people m don't realize that yeah. even if you're buying a house that's worth four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and you're paying eight hundred thousand dollars, the bank's going to look at you and they're going to say, "I'm so I'm obviously giving a like a, yeah. a crazy example here." But let's say it's four hundred and they want, and let's say five hundred. So the bank is going to come in and they're going to say the house, the value is not supported. Straight up. Thank you. So, so yeah, yeah, there needs to be some realism, but it is a seller's market. Please go on. Yeah. Yes. So thank you for saying that, Terry, yeah. because I explained that to my sellers and I explained it to the buyers that even if your house is great and somebody comes in and they fall in love with it and the value is 400 to four, there's always a range, right? Yes. The bank has a maximum. Yeah. They will send somebody in now. People who sold and bought a long time ago, they don't know that this happens now. Mm -hmm. The evaluator is going to come in. They're going to, they're not going to lend more. Um, that being said, if you're on the buying side right now, hopefully you're working with a broker. And if the broker is telling you that for this area, LaSalle, definitely, 
you know, you need to get your offer in, it's because that's the truth. And that's so we, right. you know, we have our brokers at the office that we, that we help often, you know, with their, with their transactions. We see it all the time. You need to get your offer in. It needs to, if there, if somebody's telling you it needs to go in within 24 hours, you don't want to lose the property you put in your offer. And that's the thing you have to be on the buying side. Now you have to be a little bit more aggressive. You can't just be passive and say, unless you're willing to wait, then you, you're not going to get in, the, in you're not going to get in, in, into a house because there's less inventory. Mm-hmm. More competition, so more demand. The price will or may go over asking a little bit, not by fifty, sixty thousand, and a hundred thousand like we see in Toronto. Yeah, that we're not there yet, but we are at the point where it's going a little bit higher. Uh, but the bank has to support the the value. A hundred percent. What else have you seen? I mean, this year coming up, uh, do you? You wanna you wanna talk about this after the break. You wanna take a look into your time. crystal ball a little bit. Yeah, well, or we're, you wanna we're gonna get into the condo. We situation. have under a minute here. Okay, so we'll get into it after the break. But yeah. right now, I mean, all I can tell you again is for the sellers, price your property accordingly. Work with a broker, right? For the buyers, I would say, and we're gonna get into that too. Go see a mortgage broker. Get your your pre approval because if you're not sure about what you can afford, like your maximum, you won't be able to go in and make an offer, right? You're not going to be as confident. You need to be confident with your pre-approval so you can get in and, and make your offer and you're not scared and you're on the sidelines. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to have uh, more of Eleni Akrivos and uh, myself after the uh, the break. Uh, we're going to be talking about the condo market in Montreal. We're going to be talking about what's going on uh, with employment i would even go into a little bit uh on the island of montreal and all the condo developments so more after uh, the break see you on the flip side the real estate show is brought to you by northeast mortgages make your best move with amj planning a move make it your best move with amj no double double hold on i have two hands like this oh that's our stretch children children behave no that's our mid Made a, that's our stretch for our backs and our high five at the same time. Yeah. Oh yeah, Terry, I love it. C'est bon? Is it a good flow? It is. I think it's a good flow. Good, very good. Yeah. I just don't think we'll be able to cover everything in one show. There's so much. I know. Well, I know. we did a bit of the stats, right? We talked about a little bit. You want to get into more? Like I'll ask you more about like the rates and we talked. Well, we said we we're gonna. Well, talk about let's condos. get into. I think that right after the break, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk specifically about uh, some of the things that I've noticed in the condo market. Yeah. And then maybe you can kind of elaborate on that. Okay. So can I? So I'll ask you. Well, you're gonna come back. No, I'll just I'll just come okay, in so and, just and, and, and blob and away and then your, I'll. Uh, yeah. You see, I just kicked something. What? I don't know. I kicked the wire. <laughs> he breaks something every time. I'm the same way, by the way. H-E double hockey stick. He's very oh. proper. Yeah. These are the best headphones. What do you mean you got new headphones? I bought you headphones. Know? Oh, nice. Because all the headphones were no good, so I actually went and I got nice proper headphones. Good for you. Come try these out. What are they, radio, radio headphones? Yeah. Well, these are, I mean, look at these. These are like try this out. falling apart. Yeah, <clears throat> come on. This even, thing? even mine, it's my those own the, headphones. Uh, H350s or something. Oh, where'd you get those from? Uh, nice. We bought H- them. Nice. You all, yeah, where'd you guys so. buy them? Like H- no. This one is not. HM40. This is not radio headphones, though. Yeah. What I have. Terry has radio yeah. headphones. Blah, 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 blah. You have a bigger head than me. Ooh. They're really? comfortable, yeah. no? Yeah, I have to, like, get some solid. Ooh. Ah. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to break them. I'm just going to molest them. <laughs> nice. It's fun. That's you want to grab uh you want to sit over there Marav? i'm gonna be right back <laughs> he's like Marav, you're on <laughs> you can't okay, sit still right? so i'm gonna tell you a quick story about terry <laughs> <laughs> so we have terry's wife on while he's yeah. out of the room she's gonna so, tell us some I'll tell secrets. You secrets what do you want to know about terry ask ask oh he did he put his face in the camera i just saw it yeah now. he did okay, okay everyone Are ask, ask personal this? questions about terry i'm gonna group? answer as quickly you know as I can. There's a lot of groups, back. right? I just don't know which ones allow. Which ones what? Which ones allow? Like some allow. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna groups. post it on different groups, but some allow. Yeah, some groups will ban you if you. Uh, I I don't have time to read all the rules. I'm sorry, groups, if I didn't read your rules, but I'm just trying to share the You're terrible. Love. I know. But there's so many rules. I would ban you from our group. Fine. <laughs> ban me. This is really a lot of buttons for Terry to handle. 
He can handle a lot in life, but buttons are not his forte. He breaks everything. So I'm happy that he's doing it, and I'm not. <laughs> ask ask <laughs> Dean. If I have even on my phone, they're like, what does this button do? No. <laughs> it's terrible. He wanted them all to die. The victims ranged in age from 54 to 97, and what the anti-defamation. What's a good group, Raf? On Facebook, what's a good group, people? West Island. Oh, groups are good. We, Community. We do not discriminate. I know, but we want to share the love. Montreal police told CBA the Times that they're being vigilant, but that no credible threats have been made against the local Jewish community in this city. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on the final leg of their six. So Terry's going to tell us about what he thinks is happening. New Zealand today, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's his own crystal ball. Yeah. Yeah. His wife, Megan West, West Island neighbors, West Island Watch, Montreal West Island business and career. Okay. So, did you show <laughs> it when you added the thing here? Did Dean see it? I I never that. do that. The problem was the SD card. Oh, we didn't was... have the SD card. I told you from the night before. Remember? Remember I said there was no SD card. Yeah, and I knew, and I knew there wasn't an SD, and I figured you guys just didn't put it in. I didn't know that that's connected to. Okay, got it. Now. Got it. But this he created before, and it's just there. No, he no. created right there. Okay. Cool. We have a yeah. All right, we're getting some likes. Weekend, so 15 north end of Perry Sound, um, west south limits, and so are 20 east and west end. Both is everybody just cuddled up on a on the couch today under the blanket? Oh it's cold. my God! I <laughs> wish. And that's everything you needed to know about Terry. Yeah. So she just <laughs> shared some insight <laughs> into the man, Terry, the host with the most. I think he likes that. Uh, the host with the most. The most is hostess. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Awesome show, guys. Love the content. And just why aren't I there to give radio training on GMREB Lab? That's so, there's this woman, right? Okay, so there's a woman. Her name is uh, Anne Marie. Uh, and she's at uh, Engel and Volkers. Okay, so there's your plug, Anne Marie. Okay? So. Anne Marie, I did my GMRE beat. It's on. always in the middle. Wait. Really? 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 Not nah, cool, Francois. Really? Okay, anyway, so Anne Marie, okay. <laughs> Anne Marie, um, what, we did our GMRE B training together, right? So we're sitting there, and I'm logged in, and I'm ready to go, and she sits down, and she's trying to log in. And she's like, I don't know the you, you know what's and I'm like, oh, it's right there, it's on the board, the username and password. So she's trying to get in, and anyway, she couldn't get in, so I helped her log in. So I ended up becoming her tutor for the whole GMREB training. <laughs> You're tutoring her, first. right, Anne Marie? <laughs> we will be offering a tutoring on GMRB, courtesy of Terry. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I think I saw a text just pop up. Very good text. Very good text from Tracy. And this is exactly what we're going to be talking about. Perfect. Finally. <laughs> By the way, yeah. yeah, I have to, we have to, uh, we record the commercial? Yeah, like, like do a different, uh, you know? We'll see. We'll, we'll. Uh, it is simple and it is free. Very simple and very free. Very By the free. way, that is something that um, <laughs> I need to understand. Yes. Okay. People think that we charge for our services. Okay. But even for buying, for real estate, I know. some people ask me, people what do you charge? Are, yeah. So people are under the impression, oh, we charge. We, we should do we a do show about our charge. services and how does a more like how does the service actually? People don't understand. No, you're right. We could do a show about that, Terry. Did you write that down? Because we're gonna forget. Oh, okay, boss. <laughs> no, somebody, because you know how we are. We talk and we get good ideas, and I'm like, no, here, I'm gonna write it down. No. Write it down, yes. Yeah. Don't you do that? Don't you like think of an awesome idea and the next week you're like always. Yes. <laughs> That's a very good point, uh, Terry. What is? People don't know about your services and yeah. they're free and how they work. Oh, that's what I was talking about. I oh for, my God, forgot what you I was talking about. Brain. You got distracted. I did. I got completely distracted. You said there's a text and then there's a whole bunch of other texts. So it kind of look. I just whacked myself too. Hey, there's a guy cleaning the window. Oh God. 
Oh my god, you really get distracted. <laughs> You should not have all those buttons in front of you. <laughs> but so do I. So uh, one one of us will bring each other back to. Uh... So I I was I was flying one time. Here's a story that, that I told you the story when I was flying up north. Anyways, I'm flying up north and um, people that know me, they know I love buttons, right? So as I'm flying up north, okay. I noticed a couple of buttons on my GPS that I hadn't noticed before, so I decided to to see what they do while I'm in the air. And I lost my GPS. <laughs> and then I had to reconnect my GPS signal in a panic. So, yeah. So. Hey, and Terry Kalakos. Now that's better, right? A little bit more... Uh, that's what we requested. Yeah. Sexy. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so we got a couple of texts that came in. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get into those, and um, w that'll kind of bring us into our kind of conversation that we wanted to have about the condo market, okay? So the first one uh, is, how does the new Airbnb rule Valerie, put in, uh, Valerie Plant put in place affect us? That's from Tracy. I'm going to get into that in a second. Mm -hmm. And uh, condos, it's like buying an apartment. How does one improve an apartment to realize a future capital gain? Laugh out loud. The market is not going to go up forever. It will stabilize. That's, I, that's probably coming from an investor. That sounds probably, like an investor yeah. type. So, um, so I was driving in a couple of weeks ago and, you know, I'll drive through Toronto. And when I'm driving through Toronto or New York City or Vancouver, or wherever you're driving through, what you see is you see buildings going up and there is actually business that's there, right? So you'll have office buildings will go up. You have mm -hmm. enterprise that's mm -hmm. present, right? What I've noticed in Montreal, you know, we have the Tour de Canadien going up. We have mm -hmm. the Toms. We have this. We have that. We have all these projects that are being developed, Yeah. but it's all condos. Yeah. There is no office towers going up. There is no new businesses coming into the city. Yeah. So there's all of these beautiful condos going up, but where are the people going to work, yeah. right? How are these places going to get filled? So I, I, I had this kind of realization a little while ago mm -hmm. that all the buildings that are going up are, are that are changing the landscape or they're changing the skyline yeah. of Montreal. But unfortunately, they are not... Um, they're not office. They're, it's not enterprise coming. It's not business it's not coming. Commercial. In. It's not commercial. Yeah. You have homes, right, that are being created. Yeah. Now, people have to live somewhere, but people also have to work somewhere. Yeah. Now, with that said, uh, I was having this conversation with um, one of the people that was selling one of the projects downtown and I said what's going on you know what's the what's the vacancy rate and I don't want to I don't want to get into it and, and and talk about specifically yeah. which project it was that I said what's going on but everybody hears and things you're right I know so. and but this is coming straight from the horse's mouth right yeah. and he basically explained to me he goes we are having major issues and mm -hmm. the issues are you end up having foreign investors they're gonna come in mm -hmm. they're gonna stand in front of the board where you know they have <laughs> the, the condos for sale and they're gonna come in they're gonna say I'll take this one this one this one this one this one and give me this one as well they'll basically take up half a floor and walk away and they've just bought the property and unfortunately these new bu buildings that are going up downtown mm -hmm. yes they're 100 percent sold or 90 plus percent sold but when they're done they're empty is right? that what you're really hearing this is really? what i'm okay. hearing okay and is so that you're saying from one specific one Condo specific building. source, one specific okay. uh, source, which basically is okay. from a specific project that's okay. happening right now. Fair enough. Now, with that said, okay, is there a worry that Montreal ends up becoming a ghost town because you end up having these freaking condos going up, yeah. but there's no one to actually go in there? Yeah. Right. There's there, the people that are going in there are buying it. For, the people that are buying it are buying it for investment purposes. They're yeah. thinking they're going to Airbnb it. And then Valerie Plant comes out with this new thing that says no Airbnb in the downtown core. Yeah. Right. Because the hotels were complaining, saying that they're not actually going to be uh, making any. Uh, they're, they're not going to have any revenues because of the Airbnb. So she ends up putting this moratorium. She puts it in the plateau. She puts it here. She puts it here. Yeah. Boom, no Airbnb. So now you end up having these investors that bought thinking they're going to Airbnb it yeah. empty. The units are empty. It's used as nothing. 
you know, and yeah. we have a friend that just bought a property in Nuns Island. The guy owned this place for the last seven years, came to it twice from the Middle East. Right. Yeah, are you Island, seeing? Yeah. yeah. Are you seeing this? What's going on? So, you know what? First of all, there's a lot was, of stuff. in Sorry, there. that was my rant. No, that was good because that's <laughs> you know what? It's funny, Terry. That's what you're hearing from that one, you know, the one developer that, yeah. you know, and I mean, every building's not the same. Um, I think that what you just described mm -hmm. is the the perception that I'm hearing, mm -hmm. okay, from the from people. So the perception of people are foreign buyers are driving the prices up. They're buying them and they're just keeping them empty. You know, it's causing. I you know there has been an article in in La Presse as well as the Gazette of you know one person saying that in his building you know he was the only owner of the building uh, of of the condo and the rest were being used you know for Airbnb. So we'll get into Airbnb in a bit because I do think that that's important. But the reality of what you're saying is, is that really the reality? What I'm seeing, because I'm, I mean, I'm working with, with buyers, right, mm -hmm. and sellers, um, West Island, Island of Montreal, you know, anywhere from downtown to West Island. Um, and CMHC has come up with their reports. The Gazette has also, you know, just written an article stating this like kind of 40% foreign buyer. We have to be careful, Terry. This is the thing foreign investors, foreign buyers. So CMHC defines a foreign investor as somebody who does not have an address here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Their residing address is outside of Canada. Right. Okay. So when we see, so when you're seeing this 40% of people buying, those are not foreign investors just in general. Okay. Right. So West Mount, West Island, even the condos downtown, uh, my Chinese students that I teach at College LaSalle, they live here. By the okay? way, that yeah. was the other thing. I just yeah. did a GMREB training recently and... You just brought up a very interesting point how, for me, when I had done originally, and, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm suffering from xenophobia because I really not, <laughs> okay? I, I love and Be I welcome now. everyone, okay? But the one thing that I did realize, okay, the uh, population in that class mm -hmm. was predominantly yes. Asian. Yes. So the class that I teach, right? I'm teaching real estate law, is and it wasn't the case. And yeah. it wasn't the case before. You're right. So, so definitely the landscape is changing, and we, we know we have a lot of immigration yes. in Quebec. Let's not confuse. Okay. So I'm not saying what you're saying is not happening. I think it is happening in some buildings. Yes. Because I am hearing stories. Uh, you know, it, it was in the Gazette as well, Tilde Canadien, about mm -hmm. somebody who, you know, he basically bought his condo to live in it right and he could not you know enjoy living in it because of whatever factors airbnb were going on on his floor mm -hmm. and then he he sold it and he actually at a loss okay yes. so yeah. i think it is going on i just it's, it's i think it's very dangerous to say that it's going on across the board okay because what i'm seeing is i'm seeing uh i'm seeing immigration okay i'm seeing people who live here who have an address here my students and the, the one class that i teach 50% of the class is Asian, then, you know, then you have, uh, then you also have um, the, you know, um, I guess different from Middle East, different countries, you have Syrian sure. and other th yep. that are, you know, coming here to live here. They have an address here. You understand? So they're considered immigrants. They're buying a lot of the properties. They're buying, they're the ones that are driving the market and the demand. Okay. So we know that Chinese buyers, it's not, it's not, it's not a, you know, a secret. Of course not. Absolutely. Right. And I, I think that there's, um, you know, I, I don't I don't think that it's it's specifically Chinese buyers. I think it's people in general. They're buying it's properties. It's mainly Chinese buyers. Well, I that's think, what I'm seeing. Yeah, so I, my transactions. Sorry to, to, to interject there, yeah. but it, it is. And even my my Chinese students, mm -hmm. I asked them, we had the conversation. What, what's happening? Well, the article was in the Gazette. There's a demand for Montreal real estate uh, from Chinese buyers. Why? Because they bought in Toronto. It's too expensive. They bought in Vancouver. The foreign tax came in, right? Mm -hmm. And since literally the month the foreign tax came in, which was, I think, 2017, May, June, we saw overnight a seller's market beginning in Montreal. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So there is a demand from Chinese buyers for Montreal real estate because it is a great city to live in. We have great schools, great you know, but they are coming to live here. Now, is there a small percentage that is that, that are buying and leaving them empty and speculating? Yes, I think there is. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about it a little bit more after the break. Actually, right after the break, I'm going to have uh, Laura Lepore who's going to come on. Okay. Um, she's uh, she's a friend of mine and she uh, is hosting a conference. Um, it's an AI conference it's called IT Vision Conference. It's on November 9th at Palais de Congrès. So uh, she's going to come on uh, the show with us just to talk a little bit about it.
and then we'll continue our conversation uh, about Perfect. this. So uh, now we're off to the uh, CJAD 800 traffic center with Kira Yeager. There's an accident right now, which is on the westbound 640 in La Chenette. It's causing about a 20-minute delay in the area. Also, there is a bit of a... Yeah. Laura Lapour. Let's get Laura Lapour on the line. Why is this conference important to you? Why do you want to talk about it? Yeah, why is it important? So, the future of our world, and they say, okay, that AI is the last thing that humanity is actually going to invent. Dean, are you listening to this? Okay. Because he's going to be in the tech world. Okay, so AI is the last thing that humanity is actually going to invent because it, once AI has been put in place, okay, once AI has been put in place, then from that point on, um, you're going to end up, the AIs are going to actually be able to create and do everything that humanity would normally do. So it's real, it's coming. Uh, they're putting together this amazing conference at the uh, Palais de Congrès. I want to go. So, uh, we're going to go. Uh, I want to go. You know we're why? actually sponsoring it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd love to go. You know why? I just read an article in Inman uh, News about the real estate industry and how this AI technology, whatever, it's already starting in the States. Like we're seeing different. How is it going to affect mortgages, real estate, how we buy homes? So that's another show, Terry. Yeah. This is like, robot is going to show you that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no, but that's cool. That's why I'm writing it down, Rob, because I'm not going to forget. So we have already two shows, uh, two different shows here. We have that and about services. What do we really do? What do we do, really? Why do people pay for our services or don't pay for our services? <laughs> don't pay for our services. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a hu it's very important. Yeah. No, like people don't know, they don't understand. We would be doing a huge service to our entire industry to do a show like that, right? You hear that, Terry? We would be of of great service. I'm not on Facebook at the same time, so I'm not seeing... Okay. David, you're going to call uh, Laura? Are you able to call her from your phone too, or he has to initiate the call? I think he has to call. Oh no, I'm sure it's a call or something. Oh, November 9th, that's a Friday though. Okay. Oh no, because it's Jasmine's birthday, just hit me. Is that in the daytime? Yeah, it's in daytime, the, okay. whole, the whole day. Okay, perfect. So oh. Friday is perfect, I'll be there. Very cool. So is that okay, Terry? You gave your perception and I kind of gave mine and uh, yeah, that was yeah, okay, right? Yeah, then you'll have about five minutes to give your final thoughts, so just choose something. Like, well, we didn't get into important. the Airbnb too much. Like, what do you think, Mark? Should we do more no, of that? Or? Yeah, no. we touched on it. Yeah, um, on the I don't know which button to push. Is it the right <laughs> button or the left button? Oh, I know how to use that. Is one. it this one right here? The one on the, uh, I think it's the one on the right. You want to go and ask him? Just call, just speak to him. One is to put it on hold. And one is... is it the right, right button or the left button on the phone? Okay. That was easy. They'll do it. <laughs> Oh, you're back on. Live online and on CJAD 800. Ah, I like this new music. Exciting. Um, okay, so uh, before the break, we were talking about the uh, IT Vision conference that's uh, going to be uh, on November the 9th at Palais de Congrès. Uh, on the line, we have uh, Laura Lepour with us. Laura, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, Hi. Laura. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Did I butcher your last name? No, no, you got it. You're pretty good, pretty good. All right, excellent. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about the conference? Of course. 
So the IT Vision Conference 2018 happening on November 9th at Palais des Congrès. And uh, it's about artificial intelligence and business strategy. And this is because we realize that there are a lot of conferences about business strategy, a lot about artificial intelligence, but not many that talk about the two together. Right. And as a business, we were concerned because we're like, okay, how are our customers going to use artificial intelligence? How are they preparing for it? And we realized that, first of all, most of them aren't. And everyone's talking about artificial intelligence, but nobody really knows what it is and how it can benefit them. So we decided to host IT Vision. That's very, very cool. I'm actually really looking forward to the conference. Um, can you, if somebody wants to get tickets to this, uh, how do they do it? So they can go on our website. Mm -hmm. um, it's www.itvision.vector-networks.com. Okay. But they can probably simply just put IT Vision Conference Montreal, and they should be able to get to our website. Okay. And easily purchase tickets through there. How much are the tickets? Right now, they're eighty dollars plus tax, so not very expensive. We wanted we wanted to give the opportunity to like teams to be able to come and get informed. Uh, so yeah, so they're eighty dollars until October thirty first, and then they go up to ninety. Okay, very cool. So I'm gonna put you on the spot right now, and I'm sure. gonna ask you: Are you okay to give us a couple of free tickets? <laughs> because you know what? what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a draw. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look at all the people that have texted and commented and have liked mm -hmm. our show on Facebook and all the texters that came in and will actually give out a couple of tickets. Okay, well, Terry, for your audience, I would love to do that. <laughs> awesome. That's very, very cool. Okay, so uh, at the end of the show, uh, everyone, what we'll do is uh, anyone that's texted in, and you could still text in at, uh, I lost the number, 514-800. Uh, you can text in and uh, just say, I want a ticket, and uh, we'll do a draw at the end uh, to see uh, uh, who uh, who's going to win. Okay? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, Laura. Great to seeing you. Absolutely. Have an awesome day, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yes. Cheers. Thanks. No problem. Bye-bye. So uh, going back to what we were talking about before, it's it's crazy. We actually just got a bunch of text. Uh, okay. I worked at a bank in the retail sector. All downtown branches are hiring several Asian employees for this reason. Mm -hmm. It's huge. We're the next Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, and then I have uh, another texter that texted in. Uh, further to my condo text, I am not an investor. Anybody okay. buying a property, especially a family home, should be looking at it as an investor uh, and not as a prospective investor. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said it has the mentality of an, an investor because sure. he what he said in his text what he was how do you add value in a condo? Okay. And not to put condos down, but my clients and my students, everybody knows this about me. You know, I'm I'm more, you know, into plexes and single homes than condos, but you have to understand and we talked about this I think off off air, there's a different culture also, right? So the Chinese buyers are coming from a place where typically families live in condos. Sure. We, yeah. That's not maybe our culture, right? But for them, they live downtown. They do their groceries downtown. If you go downtown, which I hadn't gone in years, now that I teach at College La Salle, all of the grocery stores, the restaurants, the landscape has changed. So again, I'm, I'm saying it's more immigration of Chinese buyers, like Chinese people coming here. Um, there is the investors that are leaving it empty and, you know, not, using it to live in it but the mm -hmm. majority what i'm seeing and you can you know I, I think i'm hearing this from other brokers as well um because they're not only buying condos they're buying in westmount they're buying in the west island they're bringing their families they're going to schools they're they're staying here it's immigration yeah but they're but they live in condos as a family home so it's 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 really i think it's a, just a cultural difference but, I, I, um, agree. Yeah. I agree i agree i agree um we're uh, we're quickly running out of time um yeah. i just want uh, I, I have an important question to ask you and uh will uh, is it is it your your hair no i'm just kidding that's not quite, okay <laughs> um so we've talked a lot okay uh about investors and stuff like that and kind of like what's happening in the market especially how it's a buyer's market uh, sorry it's a seller's market right now um if someone wants to buy their first home yeah. Where do they start? What do you advise them to do? I always advise them, like it's been years now, to to get their pre-approval done. 
and get a good one done. Okay. Yeah. Don't, I'm, I'm, when I say get a pre-approval, I don't mean just go on the site of whatever lender and mm -hmm. put in your numbers because you might not get be a real pre-approval. Get a real pre-approval. Yeah. Sit down with a mortgage broker and possibly, and that's why, you know, at the office, we all work together because not only get your pre-approval, then, you know, meet with a real estate broker. How does the process work? And maybe we'll do a show about that. What are the services? How does it work? How do you get into your home? Right? Yeah, I agree. I agree a thousand percent. And it's something that we always tell people as well. You have to get your pre-approval in. And I always tell people also, you need to be working with a real estate broker. A lot of times people are going to come in, they're going to get pre-approved. They don't want to work with a real estate broker. They want to go directly to a house that's for sale because yeah. they think that they're going to get a better deal on it. People, this is not true. I'm going back to a show that I did 10 years ago where I explained to people, yeah. when you're selling your house, you're giving the mandate to the real estate broker to sell your house at the highest price possible. Mm -hmm. When you're buying a house, you're mandating a real estate broker to help you buy a house at the lowest price possible. You do understand there is a conflict there. You need someone that's going to actually look out for your interest and make sure that you are... Um, you're represented. You're properly yeah. represented. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going at it alone and you're counting on, you know, third parties to kind of help you out, which yeah. sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. Um, a good real estate broker, a good mortgage broker, uh, our services are free 100%. There is no hidden fees. There's no charges that pop up kind of like uh, randomly. So yeah, people, um, don't know. They don't, people don't know. A lot of people know. don't know. No, and... Absolutely. So, and that goes the same thing when you're buying a house. I mean, the service is free. You're not paying yeah. commission. It's the uh, vendor that pays the commission. So, yeah. um, well, it's included in the price. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that in, on another show. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, for anyone that wants to reach us, uh, you can call us at the office at 514 680 4674. You can also visit us online at northeastmortgages.ca. Uh, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our, sh uh, our YouTube channel, which is News on the Go. Dot .ca uh, Eleni as Dan would say we're out of real estate we are good show thanks terry the opinions expressed in the preceding program were provided for general information purposes only and should not be construed as advice from CJA D800 or Bell Media. Listeners should always consult their own real estate agent with questions or concerns. The preceding was sponsored content. Your greater Montreal Mitsubishi D. Uh, you didn't it's announce the, the winner? The hater will speak French but never own a house in Monaco. I don't know. This was defending. Uh, so much for defending the French language and to concentrate on hijabs and crucifix as we are becoming a property ownership colony. My well, it's a good thing you didn't read that text. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to the government okay. of the, the Quebec. So, They're this is what they want. Facebook land. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to do a draw in right now. Okay, so hopefully there's no one coming in. I don't see them outside. No. Okay. All right. How am I going to do you this? You want to do a digital draw instead of paper oh. draw since yeah. we're what? talking about IT? Put everybody well, in front of you. Well, just close your eyes, close your eyes, eyes and, and, and just point. Watch this, okay? <laughs> so I'm just scrolling here. And the winner is... I'll announce the winner for you. All right. Who is that? No, that's not from our show. We don't want them. Sorry, that's not from our show. That's a previous show. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Uh, and the winner is... Okay, uh, buyers think agent will lower commission if they double end it. Okay, so um, there's no name, but what I will be doing is I'm going to be uh, reaching out to you by text. I'm going to send uh, this person a text message right now. Uh, they are the winners of the uh, of the two tickets to uh, IT Vision. All right. Yay! I'm going to announce it. IT Vision okay. Conference? Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, November 9th. Bye, Bye, guys. I'm announcing the winner for you on the... Uh... I don't know their name, so...